Okay, hello, welcome everybody to episode 3, part 3 of the Turing test. And in the last episode we just went through the crew quarters and found some more information about uh, what's happening to the crew. And most recently the, we've, we heard that um, they are conducting tests on the implant that they had and they discovered that they were using the implants to control them. So, we'll get on to the next These part. should not have been sent here. It's not safe. Manned space travel is not safe. Since mankind first entered space, the debate has raged over the value of manned space travel. There is a large contingent of the ISA that believes all tasks that need to be performed on Europa could be performed by machines. It is obviously less risky to send machines rather than humans into space. So this uh, set of levels, I ha oh my god, that's uh, a bit atrocious. Um, okay, so I just spawn the box again. Okay, um, I haven't actually done these ones as frequent uh, or as recently as the previous two episodes, so I expect it to be a bit more slow. We sent drones to Earth's moon. Scientists can remotely operate drones. If we did it there, why not here too? Teleoperation became possible on the moon when the communication latency was reduced to 1.4 seconds. The distance between the Earth and Earth's moon is approximately 1.3 light seconds. This enables near real-time control of drones by scientists. The story is different with Europa. As the distance between Earth and Jupiter oscillates between approximately 32 and 53 light minutes, it takes a very long time for Earth to communicate with Europa. Due to that distance, teleoperation will never be possible on Europa. Okay, but why not control drones from the satellite? Why not indeed? My systems can be teleoperated in Europa's satellite. That is when the communication lines are open. However, the advantages of human field workers, apparently, are the risk. So, why can't you solve these tests, Tom? I am not permitted to think laterally. Parts of my systems are permitted to use evolutionary algorithms. This simulates what is called creativity. However, evolutionary algorithms can converge on inefficient and ethically suboptimal solutions. Since this is the case, I'm only permitted to take action in response to a set of constraints. What do you mean by morally suboptimal? Solutions to problems that transgress ethical boundaries. Ooh. Oh dear, that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't pretty. I guess that's why we have that little box thing there to get it back just in case I fail. There we go. Why does a lack of creativity stop you solving these tests? Well, I contend that problem solving is creativity. These human interaction tests are exercising your creative mind. I don't see how problem solving is creative. Think back to the beginning of these tests. To the first puzzle you solved. It required you to throw a box through a window. Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. I simply had never thought to throw a box through a window. That is creativity, thinking outside of the box. Can a computer ever be creative? They can. But a computer's method of creativity is to try everything until something works. Think of nature. People consider nature creative. The process of evolution by natural selection. It perhaps started with one organism. From there, it essentially tried to create every organism it could. Those organisms that did not survive perished. So, 
nature's creative force is to try every conceivable idea. Those ideas that work survive. Okay, so why aren't you permitted to emulate that process? Because the solutions that a biological process creates are not always good solutions. As we see, nature is morally ambivalent. It will happily create morally suboptimal ideas to fulfill its creative mandate. We see this in parasitic worms, viruses, and pathogens. If you weren't restricted, do you think you could be creative? As creative as a human? Certainly. You believe yourself to be a creative. But in mathematical terms, creativity is merely constrained chaos. What do you mean? I have discerned that creativity is divergent thinking. Creating an organic solution to a problem. In the human mind, divergent thoughts are created and then curated by the frontal lobe. I can create divergent thoughts and moderate them. So, I am created. Organic solutions? Organic, in that it is developed through a biological process. Whether that is the process of evolution or a computed process. So this is one of the other bonus rooms. Uh, I just need to block the camera from getting you, letting you in. It's cool. If we can get into there, that would be cool. Um, but we have another interaction. Looks like I am a robot this time. And so you get another achievement for every one of these rooms that you get through. I must say I really enjoy this game for the puzzle solving aspect. No. I'm sure I'll get a bit more frustrated when I get closer. I don't really know what that one is actually about, but it's quite an interesting, interesting puzzle. A lot of that is, is real puzzle. And so this is where it gets a bit annoying with these uh, opening and closing of things. I think I, I, I figured out how to do this this puzzle quite early on, but. Um, It's quite actually quite annoying. It was actually quite annoying to get sorted because I kept doing the wrong thing over and over again. Let me see—is there anything up here? No. Okay. Right, because I need to get the green one now. I think. Now if I go over here, I can sneak the green one. But I think I need the green one. But I also need. Maybe I'd I don't know. Let's just have a look. Okay, maybe that was it. Okay, it was much simpler than what it was last time that I did it. I kept taking the wrong thing through. Okay, so you could solve these tests, but in a terrible fashion. Can you think of a solution to this one? Chop off your arm and leave it on the button. That way the door will stay open. Yeah, that's not a great solution. You threw the box through the window. Perhaps we could throw you through the window. Actually, Tom, I think I'm okay for help. Right you are. Ah, oh, it's a bit of a pain. So these levels are, <coughs> are Can I have an update on the crew? quite fun. I have not managed to track them down. It will have been six years since I've seen them.
or anyone actually. They have locked all the doors. I would not expect a warm reception. <laughs> well, at least they're expecting us. So I can get through here, but I also need something else. But turn this. Do I need this one? Oh right, okay. I think I need to turn all three of them into the right location. Let's try it. And it opens that up. I can take that, um, pop it in here. Nope, okay, I need the, I need the full thing. Okay. It's a bit more confusing than I thought. Yeah, maybe if I turn all of it this way. Okay. I'm not sure if that was a cop out or not, but we got through. So we got we're we're zipping through this uh, this uh, set of levels on the ninth one. No, it did. So what was the need to send us here? When the ISA discovered life on Europa, they deemed a ground crew necessary. The advantage of human field workers is that they can adapt to new knowledge more effectively. I, apparently, was not cutting the mustard. It is the Chinese room problem. A computer may be able to interact with new knowledge, but it does not know the value of that knowledge. So, this one has three different things that you need to do. Yeah, I guess you need to get the cube up here. I call it a cube, I'm not sure what this is actually called. Uh, then move this over here so you can get into this room. To open that door and then I'll need to turn this around again. And take this and put it back up and that gets us to the end. So I got one more. I started to collate information from my local instance. It seems the crew intentionally cut communication with the satellite. Why? It appears we had a disagreement. Right, so I can do. I can raise these up. Uh, and then raise them up even further with uh, with this. Does that take me up high enough? No, I don't think I need this to be down a bit. Does this raise me up? Yep. And this one takes me up to the top. Cool. So that was a bit more complicated this confirmed than I thought. My fears. The crew have made intentional breaches of my security. The crew have attempted to compromise my systems. What does this mean? They don't want to be found. They are hiding. From who? Us. So this is a bit more information about, about them. We've got a few logs here. Um, let's see if there's anything else that we can interact with before I watch the logs. What's that say? Uh, specialising code or something. There's a book here, uh, Hansel and Gretel. Mining laser. So some interesting stuff. So let's watch the the logs or listen to the logs. I am concerned about Mikhail. 
Why is that? He seems to be developing antisocial habits. He is spending a lot of his time in private, don't you think? Perhaps you should talk to him. What do you want me to say? Just keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't do anything rash. Are you that worried? His behavior is not within normal parameters. Please make sure he is okay. So it sounds like Tom is talking to the captain about Mikhail discovering the implant there. Don't you think they might be doing the right thing? Grounding us on a foreign moon? No, Daniel, I don't think they're doing the right thing. You don't have to be so aggressive about it. They must have their reasons. <laughs> yeah, plausible deniability. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly reduce the, the music a bit more because it's overpowering a bit. Yeah, that's better. Daniel, could I have a word? I'm busy. It is important. Okay. Are you aware that Christopher and Mikhail are involved in self-harm? Sorry, what? For how long? They have both macerated their right arms. Mikhail has completely removed his forearm. His whole... Forearm? Yes. Where are they? I had attempted to stop the situation escalating myself, but I seem to have failed. I came to you because, as our loyal captain, I can trust you to help them. Where are they? I don't know. They've disappeared. So I think the self arm is referring to the implants removal that Mikhail is doing. And uh, that makes sense because his last journal log was talking about getting Chris to help with fix some of the experiments. Sarah, I need advice. Okay. What would you do if someone threatened your friends? Your hypothetical friends, I assume. Yes, my hypothetical friends. You should protect those you love. I need you to remember that, Sarah. Seems quite twisted. So here you're kind of trying to form some opinions on people. Uh, on Tom, Tom seems to be fairly manipulating of everybody else. Oh, that's cool. I didn't see that before. Um, and so we, we just want to know what's happened to all the crew because we haven't actually heard from them yet. So hopefully we'll find out a bit more in the next episode. But for now, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did enjoy it, please like the video and subscribe. And tune back in next week for our next episode of Turing Test. If you want to see us before then, uh, on Wednesday, Friday and Sunday, we're going to be streaming at twitch.tv slash distinguishedbadgers. You can follow us on Facebook, Distinguished Badgers, And on Twitter, we're at distinguishedbadgers. Or just being badger, I think we are called. So, uh, until then, I uh, hope you have a great, great, great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.